What's going on, Softwash TV? I hope everybody's having a great day. Today we're in the shop and we're gonna be making some wash buckets. So I'll go over what is a wash bucket, what do I use it for, and how do you make it step by step. So let's dive right into it. All right, everybody, first things first, I wanna talk about pump up sprayers. I'm sure everybody in here that has a pressure washing company or a soft washing company, I'm sure you utilize a pump up sprayer in some capacity. This one right here is marked SH for sodium hypochlorite. I have one on the wash truck for degreaser. I have one for acid. So if I'm out doing restaurants and maybe I have a dumpster pad, I'll use the degreaser one. If I have some rust stains, I'll quickly just grab an acid pump up sprayer. Or maybe if I just have a small area of concrete with some tannin stains, I could put down a hot mix of sodium hypochlorite with a pump up sprayer. The two big drawbacks are one, capacity. This is a one gallon pump up sprayer right here. You can buy like a two gallon pump up sprayer, but you tend to go through that amount of chemical rather quickly. The other drawback is you have to pump it up and that takes time and it's just annoying and these things are pretty finicky, but even though they do work, there is a better alternative. I like to call it a wash bucket because I utilize it for several different purposes like I just talked about. Acid, um, sodium hypochlorite, degreaser. These are very popular, these wash type buckets they're very popular whenever it comes to paver sealing so you might hear the term a sealer lid or a sprayer lid a lot of guys use these buckets that we're going to talk about today for spraying sealer on pavers but there's so many more uses guys as long as you take care of your pump and rinse it out you could put a variety of chemicals in, in your bucket and you could use it for direct application so let's talk about what we're going to need to build a wash bucket What's up, everybody? Before we continue, just a friendly reminder. Make sure you check out Softwash TV Pro, the exterior cleaning industry's answer to the need for quality pressure washing and soft washing training. Not only will you learn about safety, but we will teach you how to wash. Learn from a pro the ins and outs of house washing, concrete washing, and low-pressure roof cleaning. We teach wash techniques and preventative measures for property protection. Softwash TV Pro will educate you about industry equipment and all of the chemicals used during daily operations. Learn marketing strategies from a successful pressure washing company and take advantage of numerous resources that will help you start and grow a pressure washing company. Thanks for watching. Now back to the video. All right, everybody, there's not a lot to it whenever it comes to building one of these wash buckets. I'm actually going to be building five of them because I got some large projects coming up and I need to use them for different types of chemicals. First and foremost, you're going to need a five gallon bucket. Most pressure washing companies and soft washing companies, you probably already have some of these laying around the shop if you buy chemicals in five gallon pails. The good thing is a lot of those lids that come on those buckets already have a hole cut into it. And that will save you some time whenever it comes to installing your bulkhead. So you'll need a bucket and a lid as well as a half inch bulkhead on the bottom, the part that goes inside of the bucket. We have half inch threads by three eighths barb on the top. We have a 90 degree. This is a 90 degree barb. You can see it's going to come right on the top of the bucket right here and it's going to go sideways. So 90 degree half inch threads by three eighths barb for the plumbing. We're going to utilize this braided three eighths hose right here. So it's the reinforced hose. Don't just get the clear kind, get the kind that's braided. To power our pump, you're gonna need a battery adapter. You could buy these things on Amazon. I have, I just upgraded some of my drills to Makita, but I'm gonna utilize a DeWalt battery on this setup. So I have a DeWalt battery adapter right here. The heart of the system is your pump. Get yourself a one gallon per minute pump. This is 100 PSI. This is going to be perfect. This one's built by Seaflow. For the actual sprayer hose, I got some 3 8 air compressor hose right here. A lot of guys go really big on the length of their hose. They're running 15 to 25 feet, and I get it. They're, you know, they're sealing uh, pavers, and they want to set the bucket down on the ground and walk around freely with their hose. I don't mind carrying the bucket around as I'm spraying, so I keep mine short. This is, uh, I believe this is a six foot section right here of three eighths air compressor hose. This one actually has quick connects on it. I'm gonna be cutting those off. Keep in mind, simple. You could set yours up with your pump. If you wanted to take your hose off, all you would need was some extra three eighths quick connects, but we're not gonna do that on this one. Then you need a sprayer wand. This is a solo wand right here. I've already used two of these before. They work great, but this is a 28 inch universal spray wand and shutoff valve. 
Other than that, guys, you're just going to need some quick connects. You're going to need some hardware to mount your battery adapter and your pump. You could get some small um, nuts and bolts, or you could just screw it down if you have some screws around the shop. Other than that, you'll need a zip tie. You will need some PVC that you want to cut the length. All right, step one, everybody, is mocking up your lid. I can't stress this enough. This is very important. You don't want to just go to drilling stuff down because then your bucket might not work how you want it to. So pro, a couple pro tips. I take the bottom barb off of the bulkhead. I place it where I want to. I orient the barb to the pump. So I know that my pump is going to draw fluid from this barb because it's going down into the bucket. So I'll just line this up right here with the suction side of the pump. And then I'll pla I'm placing my battery adapter here. Pro tip, make sure that you have enough space to take off your battery. So if you had your battery adapter right here and then you drilled it down, you can't take your battery off. You know, So just mock up everything where you know that it lines up good. All right, guys, so right now all I'm doing is mounting down my pump, my battery adapter, and then we're gonna drill a hole for the bulkhead. So I'm keeping this one very simple. I don't even have the right size nuts and bolts. I don't feel like going to Home Depot, so I just used some screws. These two are mounted right here. Be careful if you've never drilled if you've never drilled a hole for a bulkhead, it's real easy to pick the wrong size and drill the wrong size hole. Take your bulkhead, your drill bit, it should just barely slide right over your bulkhead threads, all right? So we know we have the perfect size hole to cut. All right, everybody, as you can see, we got the lid right here. Our pump is now mounted to the lid. Our battery adapter and our battery right here, you can see that it comes off no problem. So what we talked about earlier, mocking everything up, and we've just installed our bulkhead. So now I'm gonna grab some thread tape and I'm gonna start putting in the barbs for this bulkhead. All right, guys, what I'm doing right now is I grab my 5 8 hose and basically I'm just sizing it up to see where I need to make my cut at. This should work just fine. Actually, I'm going to cut it down a little bit more. Yep, that's going to be perfect. Now I'm taking a heat gun and I'm heating up my hose. If you don't have a heat gun, it's all right. A blow dryer will work just fine. Just go in the house, grab your wife's hair dryer. You don't have to sit here and fry the hose. Just get it warm enough to where it loosens up that plastic a little bit. And it makes sliding the hose on the barb that much easier. See, it slid right on there. Before I connect my hose to the other side, on the pump, I'm gonna slide on a little hose clamp right on that brass barb. I'm gonna add the second hose clamp that's gonna button down the hose on the pump itself. All right, both, both clamps are on there. Now we're gonna heat up this side of the hose.
All right, y'all, too easy. Now you can see that our plumbing is intact right now. We've connected our 3 8 barb to our one gallon per minute pump. All right, I've connected the hose on the underside of the lid to the 3 8 barb that comes through the bulkhead. Now I'm gonna put the lid, I'm just gonna rest it on top of the bucket. I'm gonna see how much hose I need to get to the bottom of the bucket and then I'll make my cut. All right, everybody, on the underside of our bulkhead, we have our 3 8 barb that we have cinched down with a hose clamp. We have our 3 8 inner diameter braided hose and it's been cut long enough to get to the bottom of the bucket. That way it could draw a can. And being that is, it is a half inch outer diameter hose, You'd have a really hard time getting that into a half inch piece of PVC. So you want to make sure that you have a piece of three quarter inch PVC. That way you could cut it to whatever length you want. I've cinched the zip tie at the bottom. That way your PVC doesn't come off of your hose right there and you could take it on and off. All right, guys, I'll show you what we got right here. Like I just said, we've just attached our bulkhead to the pump itself with this 3 8 hose. We also took off the quick connects off of this air compressor hose. We use some hose clamps right here, and we have connected this six foot section right here to our wand. All right, everybody, whenever it comes to your electrical connections right here, I like to use a wire twist for my wire connection. You could use a standard connection, and then you could get it to where it's really clean, and you could put heat shrink over it for added protection. But I like to have my stuff where I could easily work on it. And if this pump goes down, it's not a matter of if, but when this pump goes down, I want the replacement of this pump to be as easy as possible. That's why I opted for some short screws right here. That way I could just take a drill to it real quick, and and then I could just unscrew these wire twists right here and I'll be good to go. I could put a new pump on, you know, with my hose clamps right here and I could just twist the wires back together with these wire twists and I'm back in the game. A lot of guys like using the heat shrink. I think it looks real clean, but this just makes it a lot easier. All right, everybody, whenever it comes to the pumps, here's one more nugget for you. A lot of times in the past, I have found that these come where they're not dialed in to where they should be from the factory. So you're going to have to make a little fine tune adjustment. You do that right here on this pump. So you have a little where you put a little Allen wrench right there. If you're using SAE wrenches, it should be, I believe it's a number two. And you might have to turn it like one turn to the right or a turn and a half to the right. Just listen to the pump. If your pump is pulsating, you know that whenever you're on the gun, if you get on the gun and you're spraying, you can slowly turn this Allen key right here and you'll listen to it and then it will sound more even. All right, if your pump sounds like trash and you know, you're getting bubbles and stuff coming through here, that's not really the pump itself. You probably have an air leak associated with your drop stick or your bulkhead. So make sure you got enough thread tape. Make sure everything is buttoned down. Make sure your hose clamps are tight and you should be good to go. The last thing I need to do right here is I'm going to throw some stickers on this bucket. We're going to sauce this bucket up, give it a little bit of swag. All right, everybody, I got about four and a half gallons of water in this bucket. I have my battery all charged up, so I'll show you what you can expect with a pump like this. You can see how it's a lot better than using a pump up sprayer.
So whether you're using acid, degreaser, you want to use something for red clay removal, whatever it is, you could use something like this in lieu of a pump up sprayer and you're only going to spend probably 150 bucks. So that's a wrap. You guys, I was just sitting at the house editing this video and I realized I left one thing out. That is the spray tip on that Solo wand. Um, I've bought it several times before where it came with a couple different spray tips. The last time that I bought wands off of Amazon, they did not have that fan pattern spray tip that I like. So I just went on Amazon and looked up Solo sprayer wand tips and then i found the one that i want and i bought it on amazon by itself so just wanted to give you all that heads up that way you don't go buy this wand and try to do the build like i just told you how to do it and you don't even have the right tip so fyi right there i appreciate you guys watching i hope all of you guys are out there killing it if you're watching uh if you're in the industry and stuff like that if you're thinking about getting in the industry and you need some training i do have a training platform it's called soft wash tv pro it's the cheapest online platform there is for pressure washing. And in my opinion, it's one of the best pressure washing training platforms out there. Not only do you get the how-to training about how to go out there and wash houses, roofs, concrete, but I also give you resources that will definitely move the needle in your business and help get you jobs. So like I said, it's 49 bucks. I'll leave a comment in the comment section with the link. There will also be a link in the video description, guys. So you guys take it easy. Peace.